Hi everyone, Kate here, and in this video, I'll be revisiting one of my older recipes and giving it a bit of a revamp. Long-term viewers may remember the Swan Down Powder that I replicated a few years ago using a recipe from Pharmaceutical Formulas, which was published in 1902. It was a great product and one of my favorite powders at the time. As I was recently wandering around an antique store, something familiar caught my eye in a display case and it just had to come home with me. Yes, it's an original Swan Down powder container. And look, the powder's actually still in there. What I found interesting about this powder is that it's actually pressed, whereas the original recipe that I followed was for a loose product. It may have been a loose product originally, and then have been changed to a pressed powder as makeup trends changed over time, or perhaps the pharmaceutical recipe that I followed may have been different from the original branded product. Regardless, this discovery had me very curious if I could remake this recipe, but in a pressed form and without having to purchase any expensive powder pressing equipment. Here is what I came up with. For this recipe, you will need 8 grams of zinc oxide, 2.5 grams of powdered orris root, 4 grams of calcium carbonate, 6 grams of a starch such as arrowroot or cornstarch, and 2.3 grams of magnesium stearate. This is what will turn this product into a pressed powder. You will also need some jojoba oil, vitamin E oil, and optionally vanilla, jasmine, and rose essential oil, but more on that in a bit. Another optional ingredient you may wish to add if you happen to have a darker skin tone than I do is some additional pigment, as this is quite a pale powder. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to change the color in this video, but I do have an entire video about how to customize powder shades and all the intricacies there involved, which I will link down in the description below. Measure out all the powders, including any additional pigments, using a small scale to accurately weigh each ingredient. Then, pour the powders into a makeup-only coffee grinder. Now, I do specify it be makeup-only, as once you make makeup in a coffee grinder, it's nearly impossible to clean it well enough to make it food safe again. You can buy a basic coffee grinder relatively cheaply, especially if you pick one up used from a thrift store, and I would recommend getting one if you plan on making your own makeup, it just does such a fantastic job at evenly blending powders. If you don't want to invest in one, you can theoretically make this with a mortar and pestle and a lot of elbow grease, or use the Ziploc bag method where you basically just pour all your ingredients into a plastic bag and smoosh it around really well until you have an even blend. I don't find either of these work as well as the coffee grinder, but if you're just not quite ready to invest, it's definitely an option. As I do have a makeup coffee grinder, that's what I'll be using today as it really is the best tool for the job. Now before we begin, it's always a good idea when making powder to protect your lungs with a good quality dust mask. And cover the bowl with a little bit of plastic wrap to help further contain the dust. It shouldn't be a problem with the finished product, but things do become airborne during the blending process, and it's good to be safe. Blend the powders together for 30 seconds. Knock 
the lid with a spoon just to knock down any powders, and then let it rest for two minutes for the dust to fully settle. After two minutes, open the lid and add in 10 drops of jojoba oil and four drops of vitamin E oil. I also added in one drop of Jasmine Absolute Oil, one drop of Rose Essential Oil, and two drops of Vanilla Essential Oil. Now, this scent blend was based on the original formulation, but if I'm honest, I find it just a tad cloying. The orris root alone has a lovely violet-like scent, so if I was to make this again, I'd probably just add in a drop or two of rose essential oil and not bother with the other two. Following the same blending procedure, cover with the plastic wrap, blend for 30 seconds, tap the lid with a spoon, wait two minutes, and then check to see if the oils have fully mixed in. If you have any clumps, repeat this procedure until you have a consistent uniform powder. It usually needs at least two or three blends to fully mix in the oils. Now for the pressing. Pour your makeup into your powder pan of choice and gently tamp it down. I like to start by using a spoon, especially around the edges of the pan. And then, once I have a firm base, I use my fingers to compact it even further. Powders made this way don't tend to be quite as shatterproof as perhaps a commercially blended powder, but it should hold its shape pretty well. And there you go, a historically inspired press powder for all your vintage makeup needs. powder is very light and sheer and blends easily into the skin. This product was always intended just to be applied lightly and to not make the face look overly powdered. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreons. Thank you, and special thanks to my Bees Knees Patreon, Stone Gasman.